The Corsair One is a gaming PC for people who want maximum performance with a minimal footprint. Don't let the size fool you though, there's a Core i9-9900K CPU and an RTX 2080 Ti in the Corsair One i160, kept chilly with convection assisted cooling and separate closed loops for the CPU and GPU. There's also a Corsair One i140 with an i7-9700K and an RTX 2080, so click the sponsor link in the video description to learn more. What's up guys, today's video is going to focus on a hardware upgrade for my streaming system over here, which currently can handle several streams at the same time, mostly 1080, 60, but I do have a couple 4K capture devices in there as well. One of them is the Elgato 4K60 Pro, and then I have a Blackmagic 4K capture device in there as well. The Blackmagic one has been giving me some trouble, primarily when it comes to working along with XSplit, which I use every Tuesday when Kyle and I do our live show because we can stream to both YouTube and Twitch at the same time. But long story short, today I'm going Going to be doing a hardware upgrade on this system over here. I'm doing an in-place upgrade rather than actually swapping out parts in the entire system because this is an x99 based system which could potentially use an upgrade but it's currently running the 6950x which is a 10 core 20 thread CPU which is a pretty capable CPU from Intel. Anyway I'm doing a lot of exposition here let's focus on the parts I'm actually installing a second 4k60 Pro from Elgato and then I also have this capture device from Magewell uh, which is significantly more expensive it costs about $900 as compared to the $400 for the 4K60 Pro. This is the Pro Capture HDMI 4K Plus LT. LT just means it has loop through so it can do an HDMI in as well as an output. So if I was capturing gameplay while playing at the same time, you could pass it through to an external monitor. So let's take out the 4K60 Pro first. I've already done a video, at least on installation and was a, a bit of testing uh, when I originally set up the current version of my main capture system here. Uh, but this is a pretty good look looking card, I will say. Gamers Nexus actually did some thermal testing on this and found that it does get pretty warm, so depending on how you have your system configured, you might want to get some active airflow flowing over this because it's got a shroud on the front here as well as on the back, but those are not necessarily heat sinks, so those don't necessarily keep things cool. That said, if you are building a system that has a side window or something and you want to make sure everything in there is looking pretty, uh, I think this card at least does get that done properly. This uses a PCI Express uh, connection. That's a by 4 connection, uh, supports inputs from pretty much uh, any HDMI source. So it does support uh, like PlayStation 4 and Xbox capture. Uh, it has a pass through. So you have an input as well as an output on the back here. So lag free pass through of uh, the game you're playing. So you can game and capture at the same time. And it supports resolutions up to 2160 at 60 frames per second. That's 4K 60 Hertz, as you can sort of tell by the name, 4K 60 Pro. Our major card here has a uh, far less pretty packaging. It's pretty straightforward, but Majorwell has been doing professional video products for professionals for quite some time. And one of the big selling points, at least from the reviews I've been reading about this card in particular, are that it, it, it just works. It's, it's very solid when it comes to performance. Once you get it up and running, you should be able to go back and continue to use it, and it should still stay up and running. It is a bit smaller than I thought it was going to be, but it does actually have a low profile bracket there too. So for low profile systems, you could fit it in there by swapping out that bracket. It does have an active cooling uh, heatsink with a fan on it there. And other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Green PCB. On the back, we have HDMI in and out. They are not labeled on here, so I'm going to have to put some tape on there. Uh, that, that would be a nice thing, you know, in and out, clearly indicated on there. But beyond that, we still have a PCI Express uh, by 4 connection there. I believe both of these are actually PCI Express Gen 2, which is all you need for bandwidth requirements when it comes to an add-on capture card like this. Uh, supports the same resolutions, 4096 by 2160 at 60 hertz, so 4K 60. And then this does also support 10 bit video processing, uh, 444 for chroma sampling, or 444 meaning that there is no chroma subsampling. And then when it comes to signal detection, we have auto detection, uh, which is also a nice feature of the 4K60 Pro. Uh, it supports 3D HDMI time code, uh, which can be very helpful in professional environments, and it does support HDR10 uh, when it comes to HDR support. I guess it's also worth mentioning that since this is made for more professional or enterprise environments, that it is rated for continuous usage 24 hours, seven days a week, and it comes with a two-year warranty from Major.
manage well. So these are my upgrades for today. I'll go over some of the components that already are in this system, but you can check out that video if you're interested because uh, it's gone through a few different iterations already. And then I wanted to point out that there are already some existing reviews for both of these cards that I will point you guys towards if you want a little bit more information on those. I'm not gonna be doing very much on the review side today. My main goal is to get them installed, see if I can install them with the system as is without doing a complete overhaul or reformat or anything like that, and then see what kind of performance I can get when it comes to having three 4K capture cards in the same system, using them all at once. But for today, I'm probably just gonna start dabbling with that and then hopefully follow up in a future video sort of going over how I use this system in its upgraded form. Uh, and I'm very happy to be getting rid of the black magic stuff because honestly, it's been causing me more trouble than it's been worth. That said, let's get started. So here's a look at the system as is. Fortunately, it's not quite as dusty and filled with spider webs as when I took it apart last time. Check out that video if you're interested. But we're in a Be Quiet Dark Base 900 case. This is an X99 system, so LGA 2011-3. So it is uh, starting to get a little older, but it does have that 6950X processor. Remember that 10 core when Intel was charging $1,700 for a 10 core high-end desktop processor? Fortunately, it is a very functional and useful processor, so it's still been getting the job done. It's cooled by a Noctua NHT15 CPU cooler. Pretty much the best air cooler I think that's on the market as long as you can deal with the not so great color scheme. I have it oriented vertically here simply because if I had it oriented the other way, uh, I was conflicting with some of the top slots on the board there. The memory is a Corsair Vengeance LPX kit that's 32 gigs total, four by eight gigs. And then the graphics card it's running right now is the original Founders Edition GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. For power, we have an EVGA Supernova 850G3, 850 watt power supply. There's a couple WD Red 3 terabyte hard drives in RAID 1 there, so that's what I usually copy uh, footage to right off the bat, so it's backed up or at least stored on two separate physical drives. I've used a few different Intel 750 series SSDs because they do have U.2 connectivity, and that's actually one of the downsides to this board right now. For my main storage and operating system, I have an OCZ RD400, that's an NVMe SSD but it's connected to the only M.2 slot that's on this board. Other than that, Asus opted to put a couple U.2 connectors right here that can actually pipe over to uh, drives like the Intel 750 series, but those actually went out of style pretty quick. The M.2 form factor was just much more popular and usable, so really don't see many U.2 connectors on boards anymore, and unfortunately, unless I use some sort of adapter, I can't really use those for my existing SSDs. So I do wanna put a little bit more SSD storage in here. I think I'm just gonna drop a SATA, one terabyte SanDisk SSD. And then for capture over here, I have the already installed existing Elgato 4K60 Pro that's installed in the bottom slot. I have a Blackmagic 4K capture card up here. And then uh, this final card here is actually a Firewire card that I installed for my upgrading to Firewire video. And I don't need that anymore. So I'm gonna be uninstalling that too. So upgrade is pretty much complete right now, although I'm still not 100% sure about this orientation of the capture card, since again, these do tend to get warm. And since I've used, I'm using the reference design or the Founders Edition GTX 1080 Ti up here, uh, there's no active cooling since it's only got the blower fan out there. There is the fan on the Magewell capture card, so I put that up on top. I removed the backplate from this upper Elgato 4K60 Pro just to provide a little bit more space right there. And who knows, maybe even, maybe now the fan on the Magewell will help keep this card a little bit cooler uh, and then I was able to do two slot spacing for the lower 4k60 pro cards All right guys, I'm back and uh, had to delay this by a couple of days just so I could do sort of a proof of concept here. I feel like there's a lot more testing I'm gonna need to do with this configuration because there's different ways I'm planning to use it. But for now, I just wanted to set up a single use case that I think makes sense for having a system like this with three 4K capture cards set up in it. So here I have a completely separate computer. This is uh, Arctic Panther and it is running a 3440 by 1440 gaming setup. 
I'm piping that into the Magewell capture card. And then at the same time, I have two cameras that can output a 4K uh, video signal. So one is a GH5 that's up back there. And then the second one is down here. I might in the future do stuff like live builds where I actually have two or three cameras going at the same time that I might switch between. For practical purposes, a setup like this might be used for a Twitch streamer who wants to game in ultra wide while showing an image of them on screen. And then maybe also showing their mouse movements or keyboard movements because a lot of gamers like myself, people don't believe that we're as good as we are at playing video games unless you actually show our hands doing the stuff that they're doing at the same time. I know I know that's hard to believe, but people people don't trust me about that all the time. So I'm going to just uh, play a little Apex Legends here, uh, capturing it on this system. Uh, but one more thing real quick. So the way I'm outputting from this computer is just that I have uh, both outputs going on. So this allows me to actually game on this monitor, the 34GK950F from LG at 144 hertz or 143 at least. And then it's also outputting uh, to the Magewell capture card and it's able to also do 4K at 60 hertz, which is very convenient because that means I can output to the stream at a more reasonable frame rate while still enjoying the high refresh rate of my monitor here. You might also notice that the active signal resolution is just 4K here, um, but I'm able to crop that down in OBS. So I'm just showing the 3440 by 1440 area. And then here's my OBS configuration where you can see uh, Apex in the top in ultra wide and then one camera in the bottom right and then the other camera in the lower left. And then if I was setting up to stream for a bit, I'd probably put Twitch chat or, or something like, like that right there in the middle. So at this point, I'm starting a game, not streaming over here, but I am capturing it. So you can kind of see the results of the capture at the same time. At this point, I think I only have a few more things to figure out. One is going to be that the video camera capture uh, was actually acting a little weird with the Elgato cards, but I determined that the same thing was happening even with the brand new card. So I think that might be my system as opposed to the capture cards themselves. And then also uh, I need to figure out some other configurations to use this setup with. Obviously gaming and streaming would be really nice, um, but if you guys can think of anything else, please leave me those suggestions in the comment section down below. Also let me know uh, what you think this gameplay is looking like because um, I only did a couple quick test captures to sort of make sure everything was looking all right. But if you guys have any suggestions for me, please let me know them in the comment section down below and I will do my best to check those out. Oh, Alric's just stole the armor. Throw grenades, man. <laughs> How do you throw grenades? G. <laughs> no, I almost had him. Oh well. Well, I eventually died, but it was only because the other team cheated. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, comments in the comment section down below if you have any suggestions how you'd like to see me use this current setup. Thank you again for watching. Thumbs up button on your way up, and we'll see you guys next time.